De Havilland aircraft engineers created a stunning design in the early days of the jet era, second only to the famed Gloucester Meteor, the Vampire. The legendary aircraft was not only the Royal Air Force's second jet fighter, but it was also the first to be propelled by a single jet engine. The RAF decided to build the Vampire as an interceptor aircraft in May 1944, and it was in operational service within two years. The Vampire rapidly created a name for itself in the aviation industry, with its elegant twin-boom design and powerful single engine as it ascended to the air, eager to score multiple aviation firsts and shatter unheard of records. The conclusion of World War II was an exciting time for military aviation, with a race to produce the first operational jet fighter. The Germans and the British were at the vanguard of this technological battle, an unspoken arms race that resulted in the production of two iconic aircraft, the Messerschmitt Me 262 and the Gloucester Meteor. Nonetheless, the origins of one of the United Kingdom's most successful post-war fighters may be traced back to 1914. Sir Henry Tizard, a well-known figure in aviation history, approached de Havilland with an audacious idea to create a new fighter employing groundbreaking jet engine technology. Major Frank Helford, an aero engine designer at de Havilland, decided to construct a straight-through centrifugal engine, the Helford H1, eventually dubbed the de Havilland Goblin after having access to Frank Whittle's pioneering work on gas turbines. It had a thrust capacity of 3,000 pounds, which was considered high at the time. The turbofan on a modern F-35 produces approximately 43,000 pounds of thrust. The engine's design work was completed in April 1941, and the first prototype was tested a year later. The new de Havilland Goblin engine began to address the issues of early jet engines' low power outputs. For the first time, a single-engine aircraft was being considered. While the business is primarily known for the cherished wooden wonder, the Mosquito, the airplane based on the Goblin would become one of their most iconic designs. The Gloucester Meteor's success quickly drew the attention of the aviation world. Naturally, de Havilland was approached to develop and build an airframe for the DH Goblin turbojet engine. The company first created the Spider Crab, also known as the DH-99, an all-metal twin-boom tricycle undercarriage aircraft, armed with four cannons. Its unusual configuration of twin rear booms mounted behind an egg-shaped wood-slash-aluminium fuselage and a single engine was thought to be extremely experimental at the time. Using a twin boom allowed for a shorter jet pipe, eliminating the power loss caused by a longer pipe in a traditional fuselage. The tailplane was also free of exhaust interference, however the Ministry of Aircraft Production was sceptical. The lack of detail in the design and the overly optimistic construction weight seemed unrealistic, but the Ministry still approved it in July 1941. In response to the Ministry's recommendations and to enhance the efficiency of the new technology, the design was redesigned into a combined wood and metal construction and renamed the DH-100 Vampire. Geoffrey R. de Havilland, son of the company's founder, flew the first prototype DH-100 aircraft, serial LZ-5548G, on September 20th, 1943, at Hatfield. The Vampire's dual boom design was unique among fighter jets at the time. Prior to the advent of the Vampire, the only other fighter with a twin boom design was the P-38 Lightning. The aircraft entered production the following year, narrowly missing active war service. Due to manufacturing constraints at Hatfield, the English electric company at Wharton was forced to step in and construct the first production DH Vampire. Despite arriving after the war's end, the aircraft was greatly anticipated and became the Royal Air Force's second jet fighter. It was even granted the honour of leading the flypasts over London for the VE Day celebrations. On June 8, 1946, Fighter Command's 247 Squadron led the flypast, introducing the Vampire to the British public. The aircraft's distinctive form with its twin tail-boom pod-like fuselage made it easy to identify both in the air and on the ground. It was also extremely flexible, breaking numerous aviation records, including being the first RAF pilot to exceed 500 miles per hour. The strong Goblin engine of the Vampire allowed it to reach a top speed of 548 miles per hour and a service ceiling of 42,800 feet. Captain Eric Winkle Brown successfully landed and took off from an aircraft carrier using a Sea Vampire in December 1945, and the aircraft immediately became a favourite among pilots. As a result, it is the first real jet aircraft to accomplish this feat. 
Later, the vampires had their first active combat experience during the Malayan emergency of the late 1940s and early 1950s, when communists fought for Malaya's independence and a socialist economy. While Malayan Federation and Commonwealth forces fought to protect British interests, it was utilized in a variety of ground assault missions. Later variants of the plane were also sent to the Middle East and Africa. Similarly, the vampire briefly saw service against Mau Mau militants in 1954 as the culmination of Kenya's rebellion to British colonial control. Eventually, technological developments outpaced the capability of the aeroplane. Nonetheless, the PH vampire made an important contribution to the development of British aviation. The de Havilland Vampire FB.5 fighter bomber, a modified version of the DH Vampire F3, was the primary production version of the aircraft. This variety also served as the foundation for many of the export's variants. Separate night fighter and trainer models, the DH113 Vampire NF and DH115 Vampire Trainer, were produced in addition to the Vampire Bomber. The Vampire was not only a land-based aircraft, but it was also adapted for shipboard use, as the Royal Navy renamed the Type C Vampire for carrier-based operations. Captain Eric Winkle Brown successfully landed and took off from the carrier HMS Ocean on December 3, 1945. The Royal Navy's first jet fighter was a notable accomplishment. In March 1948, an experimental variant of the DH Vampire with enlarged wings and a DH Ghost engine established a global altitude record of 59,446 feet. Later that year, six Vampire F3s flew across the Atlantic for an RAF goodwill trip of Canada. The Vampire, on the other hand, was a popular export aircraft, with about 30 air forces eventually operating the type. Other air forces were intrigued in the Vampire's capabilities after observing its agility and prowess in the fighter and attack roles. In 1946, the Royal Australian Air Force ordered 50 DH-100 Vampire F1, F2 and FB versions, the majority of which were powered by Merlin engines. The second aircraft, on the other hand, was powered by a Rolls-Royce Neen engine. Australia was the aircraft's primary external user, using it in various configurations until the early 1970s, while France had its own form of the vampire known as the Mistral. Many other countries also used exports, Norway, Rhodesia, Sweden, and Mexico, where it was dubbed avocado due to its shape and color scheme. Until the early 1950s, the DH vampire served as a frontline fighter for the Royal Air Force. Following that, it was only used for pilot training purposes. Nonetheless, the aircraft enjoyed a surprising longevity in numerous air forces around the world, with many still in service in the 1980s. As late as 1990, the Swiss Air Force was the last Vampire user, retiring a sizable fleet of DH Vampire FB6s and T55s from active service. The Vampire's unique appearance and twin boom design became a trademark of de Havilland's aircrafts. While this design was uncommon in jet fighters, the Vampire proved to be a capable fighter that served with the RAF until 1966. In the United Kingdom, the Air Ministry noticed that the Vampire was soon becoming obsolete, especially in comparison to its competitor, the Gluster Meteor. The Meteor 8 version outperformed the de Havilland jet, forcing the Vampire to retire from frontline service in 1953. However, the Vampire was used in advanced training roles by the RAF until 1966, when it was eventually surpassed by the Folland Knat. Other aircraft, such as the de Havilland Sea Venom and later the Hawker Hunter, all eventually overtook the Vampire in the fighter role. Although the Vampire service was terminated, it remained popular among aviation aficionados. Some have been preserved and are on exhibit in museums across the world, while others are still flying in civilian hands at air shows. Because of their basic design and ease of maintenance, Many of these aircraft are still in service today.